My name is Alejandra Sanchez Lopez. I am an assistant uh, clinical professor. I'm working the neurology in the geriatrics department. The most common adverse reaction um, to the Canemab are infusion-related uh, reaction. And these typically were mild to moderate in severity. They occur in the, during the first dose. Uh, and it can range from symptoms like uh, fever or chills, uh, or changes in blood pressure, flushing. And uh, they typically can be treated uh, or pre people can get pre-medication to reduce the chances of something like that happening in future doses. And then uh, it can happen in one out of four patients. Other possible adverse uh, events uh, include the amyloid-related imaging abnormalities or short for ARIA. And there are two types of ARIA, ARIA-E, E for edema or swelling of the brain, uh, and ARIA-H, H for hemorrhage or bleeding of the brain. And ARIA-E uh, can occur in about 13% of patients. They're mostly uh, asymptomatic, mild to moderate in severity. Uh, and they do tend to occur in the first three months uh, of treatment, and they can resolve in the um, following four months. There was, however, a 3% um, incidence of uh, ARIA-E that was symptomatic, and that um, typically can include symptoms like headaches, visual disturbances, or confusion, uh, and they do require immediate attention. The, the other type, ARIA-H, uh, that can happen in about 17% uh, of patients and that was largely asymptomatic. So only 0.7% of patients develop symptoms and the most common one is dizziness. And it is important to mention that people that have two copies of a gene called APOE4, they're at higher risk of developing these uh, side effects. And for this reason, we screen patients for this gene and we do not recommend treatment if they do have two copies of APOE4. And the other patients that can be at risk are people who take blood thinners. And we also do not recommend treatment in patients who are taking blood thinners like warfarin or rivaroxaban, uh, medications like those.